This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Barnes & Noble Nook eBook Reader. The Barnes & Noble Nook was first announced and reviewed in a limited way in the beginning of December 2009. It's now the middle of February 2010, and it's widely available, and it's gone through two firmware updates, the most recent of which, 1.2, turn it from a not very polished device into one that's quite good. You can go see this at your local Barnes & Noble store. Uh, we're not going to do an extended video of this, you've probably seen them before, we're just going to show you how you actually use the lower screen with respect to the upper screen and what the speed's like and all that kind of good stuff with firmware 1.2. So right now we're in a book and you can turn the pages using these buttons right here. They're on either side so neither lefties nor righties will be unhappy. You can also turn the page by swiping down here when the touch screen is turned off when it's black. If you want to get back to the home menu, you just tap on the N here. It's actually a touch aware button. So we'll start from scratch. This is what you see, main menu, basically nothing on the main display other than the little N nook icon. And down here, when you touch screens, capacitive color touch screen, you see the different things you can do with the nook. You have the daily right here, which is fresh content that Barnes and Noble pushes every day over the 3G connection or you can use Wi-Fi if you want to as well. You get two pieces here every day. It's a humor piece and a this day in history kind of piece, both written by professional writers and they're pretty interesting. If there are any new Nook updates coming, they'll also be listed on the screen here. If you want to move, you use these arrow keys here which have been enlarged. It's much easier to use compared to the original firmware. And you want to select something, you tap the little red the little round circle. As you can see, page turn speeds are just fine now. Not slow like it was when the Nook first came out. My library shows you your library books. You have your Barnes & Noble library. Anything that you purchased or downloaded from Barnes & Noble is listed here. You can have the cover flow version. If you want to go back to the regular menu, you just hit the X button. Anything that you sideload, that means put on via USB cable or micro SD card, shows up under My Documents. This can be Google Public Domain EPUB books, Sony Bookstore books, Kobo Bookstore books, you name it. It works with anything that is standard EPUB with or without DRM, a PDF with and without DRM. So again, if you want to go through your titles, you just use these arrow keys. Want to shop? So connect to the network. So here's the uh, the Barnes and Noble online bookstore. Here you can choose between ebooks, magazines, newspapers, bestsellers, New York Times bestsellers, and so on. And you can do a search. You can browse. Say ebooks, and you can pick by variety of criteria. Subjects, biography, memoir, cookbook, children's books, historical fiction, and so on. So it's it's very easy to use the bookstore. You can use this back button to get back to where you were. Reading now takes you to whatever book you happen to have been on most recently. And the settings screen shows you how much storage you have available. This does have two gigs of internal storage. Shows you how much you've got left on your micro SD card, and owner profile information, things like that, how much battery you have left. And from here you can do things like change your screensaver and you can make your own screensavers and put them on. Change the sleep timer independently. This one can sleep at a different time than the bottom one does. And in fact that is how it works. This one can go for up to 20 minutes, that's the maximum they have before it goes to sleep and you see a screensaver, whereas this one goes to sleep, generally speaking, in 30 seconds because the color display does use more power and you don't need it as often. I'll do a quick comparison between this and the Sony Reader Daily Edition PRS 900. So here we have the Sony Reader Daily Edition, the PRS 900, next to the Nook. 
This is a touch screen. The entire e-ink display has a touch screen layer on it. And as a result, it does lose some clarity. As you can see, this is just your standard Visiplex e-ink 6-inch display, same as used on the Kindle and on the Sony Reader Pocket Edition, the Sony Reader 505. So you do have better clarity here, though you use, lose the usability of the touch screen here. As you can see, you can just swipe right on the screen with this one. And in case you haven't watched our Sony video, we'll show you the store experience via the touch screen. Here's the home page. Anything you want, you can just tap right on here. So here we have the bookstore up on each. It's the Barnes & Noble bookstore here, which you can see is still largely text-based. The special offers and things are more graphical. And as we show you, also if you go in store, you're going to get special offers while you're in the store. If you have Wi-Fi on, the Sony bookstore is, is looks much more like a web page. It's really nice looking. So you can tap on any of the books that you're interested in here, hit the arrows to progress through the bestseller list. Or you can just tap on one of these things, say you're interested in newspapers, just tap on that. And then you get a graphical listing of all the newspapers over here and you can filter by subject as well. So as you can see, the touch screen allows for a much more sophisticated interface, but as you can probably also see, even through the video camera lens, this does have a sharper screen. So we'll take a quick look at just the basic hardware of the Nook right here. You can see how relatively thin it is. It's not as thin as the Kindle 2. This is a half an inch. The Kindle 2 is about 0.3 inches. It's about the same thickness as the Sony Reader Daily Edition. Here we have the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. There's also a speaker here at the bottom. Not exactly super loud, but hey. Micro USB port for syncing and charging. The charger and USB cable are included. A case is not included. And this is your power button. Tap it quickly to put it to sleep and turn on your screensaver. If you hold it for about five seconds, you can turn off the screen completely. Oddly, Barnes & Noble says that if you turn it off completely, it won't charge. And if you want to get to the user replaceable battery, the micro SD card slot, or the SIM card slot, though, I don't know that this works with any other SIM card, this is what it looks like with the back cover off. It just pulls off pretty easily. So here's your micro SD card slot. This is the replaceable lithium ion battery. And this little speck of yellow here is the SIM card. It doesn't look like a standard AT&T SIM. That's not their usual branding colors, but indeed this is an AT&T 3G HSDPA radio and an AT&T compatible SIM card. The NIC also has Wi-Fi in case you're out of range of AT&T data connection services or say you're abroad. It does not have a built-in web browser. Of course the Kindle is the only one that has that. Not that it's exactly the most wonderful web browser in the world, but it's something. Next we're going to take you to a Barnes & Noble store in our neighborhood and we're going to show you what happens if you go in there and you turn Wi-Fi on. See you get special offers pushed to you, sometimes coupons for cookies, discounts on books, uh, and you get some free content. So we'll take a look at that next. So these are things that are only available while you're in the store. You can read these short stories, essays, that kind of thing. Let's see what else. And sometimes you get coupons for things like free cookies and coffee, but alas, not today. So that's the Nook in-store feature. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Barnes & Noble Nook. Visit our website to read the full, very detailed review.